Hi, I'm Stella Donnelly and you're watching Consequence. We are going to get into talking about the new album, Flood, um, which I listen to. Obviously very big fan. I'm very excited for everyone else to get to hear it. Um, and then in the press release for Flood, it's described as the product of months of risky experimentation, hard moments of introspection, and a lot of transition. So why in that sense? So why was experimentation risky for you while making the album? Um, it was, I just feel like I had to push through a lot of my own barriers that I'd put up. So I think maybe I had like uh, closed off myself a bit to creating and, and um, maybe I'd started letting fear of it not being good or perfect kind of hinder my process. And, and, um, and so it was... I'd been do, putting it off for quite some time. And so I think by the time it was, I was ready to start again, I really, um, I'd built it up so much in my head, I think. And so it, the whole thing just felt like skydiving the whole time because I'd lost all the tools that I used with my first album, you know, all the things, all the confidence boosters and different things that I knew worked for me. I'd completely forgotten them all. And obviously like, two years of touring pretty hard and also then a lockdown and, and crazy COVID stuff you kind of you do erase a, you do get rid of a lot of that stuff um after a while yeah. and replace it with new with new things so yeah it probably wasn't that hard but for me I found it really <laughs> another person probably go it's it's totally normal so yeah <laughs> Well, I know you also, you moved around a lot. You were all over Australia while you were writing the album. So I wanted to know, first of all, was that your intention when you set out traveling to kind of like create this writing retreat almost for yourself? No, we had no intention of traveling around. It was, we, we, uh, we went up and visited my boyfriend's dad, um, who'd actually just lost his house in the bushfires that happened in, in the east coast of Australia. And we were visiting him and, and helping him move into his new place. And uh, that's when COVID kind of really set in. And we, we found out too late that the border to where we live in Western Australia had closed. And so we actually had no way of getting back into Western Australia. So we just kind of settled in Bellingen, which is this kind of lovely country town um and went into early retirement for four months <laughs> so it was like it was really um it was a great great experience um you know in terms of just getting just having to slow down and and um I picked up a lot more bird watching and and spent a lot more time in nature and and, and all of that so that was really great and then we eventually managed to get apply and we, we got accepted to go back home and um, after four months and then that's where I wrote the bulk of the album because we had a piano in the room in, in the house and and kind of yeah everything was kind of feeling really really great and then we recorded most of the album and then I went over to Melbourne to um, play some shows and, and stuff and then three days after we arrived Melbourne um, plunged into its like fourth lockdown and it went for like about six months and so all the places we kind of like we kind of got stuck it wasn't really a choice of kind of living this nomadic lifestyle but um, I'm really grateful for it and we always had a place to stay and it was always you know in no way was it ever um, horrible like it was always okay and and stuff. Do you feel like the location affected how however those songs turned out. Yeah, definitely. So I think the first four months in Bellingen slowed me down. I lost my sense of self. I lost any sort of like ego or anything around music because we weren't sure if we'd ever play shows again. And, and it just felt like the world was kind of stopping forever. And so I forgot about my bigger self in a way and just kind of went back to who I am and and then going then back to Perth with that feeling um, gave me that sort of energy to write. And then the piano, I guess, helped that um, with something fresh to listen to and stuff like that. And then Melbourne was really good because it. I wrote Flood in Melbourne and it, it was a real, like, it was a real dark time for a lot of people. And it kind of, um, it, 
it forced it made music the the medicine at the time you know it wasn't something I had to turn up to and write it was like it was the only thing that was making me feel better and so that that's where kind of those sort of medicinal factors in music came out so mm. yeah they all definitely kind of um prescribed their own um feeling to, to the record mm -hmm. those places yeah and then also the the press release mentioned that the producers you worked with Anna Anna Laverty and then, yeah Laverty yeah. and yeah. then Jake from Ethel Ethel um, it mentions that they really emphasized a sense of spontaneity in the studio do you feel like you're someone who tends to stuck in in what's comfortable and like retreat into patterns or is it instinctual for you to want to be spontaneous? I think I need it to be new for it to feel um, good and to sound good. And so that's why the piano was such a big part of this record was because I was able to try some stuff that I wasn't very good at and, and, <laughs> um, and just kind of, you know, explore that and it felt really fresh sonically. And so I think then after that, that kind of set the tone for the record and, and then the band members were, were all trying different things and trying different instruments. And, and yeah, I, I definitely, um, I, I don't like getting stuck into old patterns and to, to, to the point where if I pick up the guitar and play the same chords, I'll just like put it back down again because I, I yeah, get really bored really easily. <laughs> and I know you you played piano as a kid, right? So this was kind of your first time sort of like really leaning into playing again since then? Yes, definitely. What, what do you, or what, what was it like? Because I know there's also like a lot of themes of childhood on the album mm. um, and songs that feel like they're kind of written from a child perspective. Do you think that was something, is that just incidental? Is that something that you kind of planned or how do you think that those two aspects played into each other? It was an accidental thing. I think maybe the, I, I tried, like I, I thought about it the other day and it feels like the, the, even just the physicality of playing a piano versus playing a guitar, like with a guitar, you're kind of, you're hiding behind it and it's there protecting you and you can put pedals on it. You can make it distorted. You can, you can kind of like make it what you want, but whereas a piano, it's just like, it's just there and it's, it's going to sound like a piano, you know, whether it's an old sounding one or whatever, but it's still just that honest sound. And I found it really like I couldn't write anything pretentious, you know, like it was, it was only going to, I could only write earnestly when I was playing on it because it just felt like um, whatever it was that I was playing held more reverence for me and and so it, it definitely set a feeling and um yeah I just feel like the piano is slightly more holy <laughs> than the guitar <laughs> people will disagree with that but yeah it's just definitely it's a very pure instrument yeah and that, that's funny that ties into my next question I was going to ask because beware of the dogs was so much it was it was so guitar focused um so I was going to ask how do you like what kind of emotions do you feel like a guitar brings as opposed to a piano on an album like Flood? Yeah, I think the, a guitar brings um, sort of, not satire, maybe a certain sarcasm in some ways. It, it definitely, like for me lyrically, when I play chords and it, it definitely um, feels more... Uh, I'm just trying to find the right word, but like um, almost gives an opportunity for like a bit of comedy or like, or kind of cheekiness or um, almost like that kind of like whatever nonchalant sort of feeling where it's like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll say something slightly emotional, but then I'll follow it up with like a line that kind of dismisses that just to kind of, yeah, it just feels a little bit more um, relaxed in some ways and then and then on the piano it definitely brings out certain certain more kind of like uh deep and reverent feelings mm -hmm. 
yeah, I, I can definitely see that. But I also, I mean, I feel like even on Flood also, like there, it's a through line through, I think all your work that you're able to put in that sense of humor, but it never feels like too corny. It never feels like you're parroting yourself or something. So how do you, how do you feel like you're able to keep that balance? All I know is that when I'm doing it, um, I don't really, like, I very much feel like it gets cheesy quickly. And so <laughs> I like, I definitely try and avoid that. Um, but yeah, it def it feels, um, feels like when I'm writing lyrics, uh, I, I don't really have much control about, about what comes out at the start, but it's how I kind of move it around and, and set, set a feeling and set, set a tone, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. That's the main sort of thing, I guess. But Flood kind of started from the two lines I just had going around in my head at the, when I first wrote this song. It was taken out to sea in the flood, swimmer looking for the line. And, and just that, that feeling and that visual kind of opened up the rest of the song lyrically for me. Um, it kind of anchored the rest of the song down and I could go go off on little little adventures <laughs> in the verses. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I was also going to ask, because I know you wrote like over 40 songs for the album. Of course, I've never written an album. I don't know like if that's, I don't know like what the normal number of songs you write for an album is, but how do you decide out of that? How do you pare it down to like 10 or 12, whatever songs that you want to keep on an album? Most of them were shit, so <laughs> so that kind of um that made it easy <laughs> to choose. Um, but yeah, a lot of them were terrible, and I think it's just like it was the process of like getting them out of my system after after a few years of not practicing writing, and and so you know it's like I I don't know I liken it to a sit up or something like the first sit up you do is always going to be like oh like really hard, and then slowly you kind of the next day you go back and it's like, oh, I can do the first five sit-ups now, but you know, <laughs> that's it or whatever. So yeah, it's just like getting that muscle going again. And, and, um, mm. and so, yeah, I, I still would like to like take a look. I've got, you know, I've got all the songs in a file and, and, you know, they've, some of them are just based around a tiny idea and, and stuff like that. And, and maybe I just don't think I had the taste yet to, to build those songs up in, in the right way. Um, and, yeah, so I would like to go back and start to kind of take those songs apart again and build them up. So I'm just holding my lip gloss. I don't know why. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, I've made this. I've made this couch. This is actually my bed, but because I, I, I live in a share house and it's like eight a.m., so I've like oh I've like put a blanket and like a cushion over my pillows to make it look like I'm in my living room. Yeah, just... you had me. You had me completely <laughs> fooled. I also like for a second I forgot that in Australia the seasons are flipped. Yes. So I'm like I'm like sweating in my room now. I had to turn off the AC because it was so loud. I'm like, how is she wearing a sweatshirt? Like that, that sounds I've got, right now. <laughs> I've got thermal, and then I've got another thermal. Oh, Oh and then a hoodie like and, my, and, and I've got Ugg boots on. <laughs> oh my god that's, that's my smoke, smoke and mirrors yes <laughs> okay so I, I, I also a, a trend that I have noticed just throughout your work as a listener and I think you've also touched on this as well in like other interviews you tend to write a lot of songs that focus on other people and kind of coming from their perspective and on this album I especially saw that of course with a song like How Was Your Day which you said was inspired by relationships through like especially through the pandemic and that period of time where it can get like very mundane um so why do you think you are so drawn to writing about other people where you kind of take yourself or at least it, it seems like you take yourself out of those stories Oh, that's great that it seems like I take myself out because <laughs> so many, so many of them are about me. No, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, th I always like, I always use, you know, my own experiences in life, whether it's, you know, past relationships and stuff. And then I, I probably take like a big chunk of myself and put it into a song and then use storytelling and narrative and, and, imagination I guess to to kind of to weave weave something slightly more interesting than my own life because <laughs> if I was just writing about fully myself it would just be like a song about like watching more alone on 
you know, on binge or something. Like it'd be like yeah. watching watching sex education all day or something. Like I've got to like I've got to like kind of write something um, and bring other things in to make it slightly more elevated and and. Mm -hmm art <laughs> so that's nice but yeah I definitely I there's so much me in that in those dialogues but maybe I, I shape it in a way that that kind of um it's looking at the dynamic and rather than the story and it's it's trying mm -hmm. to capture that that feeling between two people that, that and trying to make that into something bigger and, and and shine a torch on it I guess yeah yeah and then I I was also going to ask, because I, I feel like the song, at least in the US, the song that kind of got the ball rolling for you was, of course, Boys Will Be Boys. And on this album, I, I see Morning Silence as a kind of companion piece in a way to that song. And there's that really great lyric where you say, I wish I could water it down for you, but my mouth is dry thinking about it which I think is just genius. And I know obviously songs that like reference assault, it's, it's unfortunately not uncharted territory, but I think a lot of people kind of still see it as like a taboo thing or or something that's still like very shocking, even though it's something that is very common. So do you do you ever hesitate to kind of put those like those stories that can be perceived as like very vulnerable and you tell them so vividly? Do you ever hesitate putting that on an album? Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's always and you know, even that that I even had the moment while writing that song where where I said I wish I could water it down for you because I was like I even felt I was like oh this is too this is too much like you really kind of and so I put that line in there to kind of even soften it in some way because it, it I, I do I I'm in everyday life I'm a people pleaser and I, I walk into a space and I only want to make that space more comfortable for people I, I don't want to I don't get I don't just like get into arguments with people you know on a day-to-day -day thing about about these issues I think you know if it pops up then I try and have a conversation that's like gentle and and understanding and and stuff like that so it is this is the big the part of me music I guess is the part of me that does just kind of go for it a little bit and it's my outlet. Um, but even within that, I have my own, you know, um, guilts and, and uh, insecurities about, about speaking about those things. But if I don't speak about it there in that space, I won't, you know, I, I just won't. And I, I'd have to, I have to, because it's, mm -hmm. it's stuff that's just around me. And Underwater on this record is, is a song that's about, I wrote it after doing ambassador work with a um an, a center for nonviolence in, in Perth and and it was a it's a women's and children's refuge uh, for domestic violence and and when I visited the place and I spoke with uh, the people that were living there and working there and the statistic that I walked out with that day that was just stuck to my brain was that on average it takes someone seven tries to leave uh, uh, an abusive relationship before they can successfully leave and and I just that just shook me so much and 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 so underwater I guess that's the song that I I kind of it's a letter to an ex it's it's a it's a fuck you um and but it's also yeah I guess a more mature boys will be boys in a way that where it's a little bit more subtle but but I I hope that you know it spreads the awareness of 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 this this statistic and 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 how we need to keep you know we need to try and lower that a bit you know yeah 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 wow yeah that's extremely powerful to <laughs> yeah. and then kind of going back to not not as serious of a topic but mm. going back to kind of the themes of childhood that I've seen throughout the album do you have this is kind of a big question but do you have any like what's your attitude I guess now towards aging especially as mm. an artist who you know you put out work publicly so if you want to you're able to look back at like beware of the dogs and see like these past younger eras of yourself how do you feel about kind of growing where people are able to like very clearly see these eras of you yeah I had that's such an interesting that's a great question it is a really um 
Yeah, I'm kind of glad that, you know, I was 25, I think, when Boys Will Be Boys came out. I was like 23 when I wrote that song um, and I'm 30 now. And so, you know, I'm glad that I came out of the gates with that song. And I think that's a really, um, even though, you know, there might be, it, it's maybe the way it was recorded and, and whatever, like any artist will look back and go, oh, God, I, I could have done better with that or that lyric's a bit basic or whatever I, I kind of just you know I have to accept it for what it is and it is just something that's always out there and, and I'm glad that I, I got I got the first seven years of my kind of adulthood to myself thank fuck because I was just a nightmare when I was 18 and I just would like I don't know how Billie Eilish and stuff live like I, I just was I was an embarrassment to, to my family like come come and get me a mum I'm like vomiting in the back of someone's house like please like you know just like <laughs> misspent youth <laughs> and so so I I kind of you know I got that time to to make all my mistakes and my fashion faux pas and and all of those sorts of things and so um I feel really grateful for that and and um it is still really scary kind of having that part of myself out there and people can look back and and stuff but I guess that the thing, the thing that I'm overcoming and trying to overcome is ageism in in Australia particularly and, and that sort of thing where I feel like the industry uh ages women a lot faster than anyone else and I, I feel like yeah we we've kind of I don't know we're not gymnasts you know like <laughs> we're not like <laughs> We're not, right yeah it's like we're not injured like there's not that you know <laughs> my hips I don't need my hips to be fantastic to write a song you know <laughs> um so yeah I, I feel like that's that's something with, with when it comes to age that I really want to speak out against right I don't know it's a hard yeah, one it is I don't want to sound like an old bag <laughs> No, you don't. <laughs> okay, so sad, sadly, we only have like nine minutes left before oh my gosh. Zoom kicks me off. So we're gonna we're gonna go out on a high note. It sounds like there's so many amazing like backstories behind this album that you know haven't even been like mentioned in any of the press for it. So do you have a like favorite backstory pertaining to the making of the album at all? Um. Well, I guess for me one of my favorite moments of the record was um was writing move me which is a, a song I kind of wrote within like an afternoon and it just came out so quickly and and it just felt so organic and and it really um that was the first song on piano that I wrote and and it kind of set the mood for the rest of the the record but we we found an old like lap steel guitar um <laughs> in the in the studio and we kind of um, started kind of playing on it not properly because none of us know how to do it but yeah it was really fun to just like add those textures to the record but my favorite moment sorry I've just remembered oh, is okay. um, on medals uh, so we had uh, a, a young guy called Jack who was our studio assistant he was a fr friend of my younger brothers and he was just there to kind of assist and learn and he was studying music production and stuff and and he was there every day and then we found out he played the saxophone and so we were like hey bring your sax tomorrow like we maybe maybe there'll be a part for you like on one of the songs and and we kind of set put him in the studio and we're like maybe just play something along to medals at the end you know and he just like delivered this incredible sax solo and we were all just like what the fuck? <laughs> it was amazing he was so amazing and and it ended up on the record and it was just we were just like cheering in in the <laughs> in the control room while he was playing it, it was so wonderful so thank you to jack um, thank you jack yeah thank you jack <laughs> <laughs> so good yeah, I, yeah the the university I went to had a very big jazz program so like this the saxophone I like I understand like, yeah there's just some there's something about people who play saxophone <laughs> totally totally yeah definitely definitely all right well that's all the questions I had prepared for you but this was so fun it was so good to chat with you about the album we're all so excited for it to be out in the world thanks so much Abby great to chat to you you too bye, -bye. okay bye